Hello my lovely friends, my name is Ava and today we're going to be talking about all of the romance books that I have at the top of my physical TBR. Again, I want to apologize for the glasses glare. I'm going to try and keep my head a little tilted for y'all, but um, I'm in the glasses kind of mood today. Sometimes you just don't want to put in contacts and that day is today. <laughs> um, so today we're going to be talking about these books behind me. This is my TBR bookshelf. If you haven't seen them in any of my videos um, <laughs> since I moved back in with my parents. Um, and so this is the shelf that I have dedicated to be my TBR shelf. It used to be a TBR cart, but now that cart is full of historicals. Um, so I decided to just move some things around. And so this is now my TBR shelf. And I decided to put all the books that I'm most excited for on the top right here so I can easily grab them. Normally they're flipped the other way, but I didn't want to spoil any of, these, any of these books in the video. So that's why they're flipped around right now. But down below, we have more romance books, we have YA books. Um, to just books that I'm not as excited to read as these. And so these are at the top of my TBR and I thought I would share with you what those books are. Also, I just wanna mention the little shelves around me here. Um, this used to be my mom's office before I had to move back in due to medical reasons. Um, and so she had these little like plastic, like this big shelves um, to hold some of her pictures. She's a photographer, like all around the room. And so I just put it up for my like knickknacks and stuff. So as you can see, like there's a, you can't really see that one all that well, but that's my sister and me at prom, her prom or before her prom. I wasn't, I didn't go to her prom. A print my best friend gave me, my chronically courageous mug. There's Ariel and a candle. And then um, that is a cup from, the Little Women book box that I got with all the Little Women sisters on there, the, the March sisters. There's a book heart cutout with a little Lego turtle on the top. And then there is Sully. <laughs> and then that is a um, bookmark holder that I made at a pottery place. It says Avery's bookmarks on there and it has all of my bookmarks. I might do like a bookmark video if you're interested in that. And then this this <laughs> is a cross stitch um framed thing my grandma got me for christmas a while ago um and yeah it's cats in a library and it's like cross stitched and framed and everything and i love it and then what's holding my books right now that's like a mug it says you're about to be hugged <laughs> and then um this is just a springtime smelling candle that i love so anyway we're done with that. Um, let's get into these books. The way that I have sorted them on my shelves is um, by series and by height. Um, so the tallest ones are over here and then it goes to the shortest ones just because that's what's pleasing to my eyeballs. Um, and then they're also grouped together by series. So as you can see, kind of like here, this one's a little short, so it should be at the end, but I combined it with a series, if that makes sense. So um, let's just get into these books. First, I have this bad boy. This is the Black Dagger Brotherhood and Insider's Guide by J.R. Ward. This one is huge. Um, I have not read a lot of these things in here. Um, the main reason why I wanted to pick this up is because of a novella in here called Father Mine, um, which I have not finished yet. But it's about Z, you know, from book three that we all love. It's like almost every single person's favorite book in the series. Um, Z and um, his mate and possibly a little, a little somebody else it's called father mine you can figure it out um but yeah there's a bunch of other stuff in here too um there's like a bunch of like character um guide stuff and i think like other little short things that she um has written but the main um novella in here is the one between um zeta sabella i got this off of thrift books a while ago so it's a big book and it doesn't really fit in with all my other Black Dagger Brotherhood books because it's so big and all of mine are like mass market papers, paperback size. So um, it's gonna be interesting to put this on my Black Dagger Brotherhood cube because I have a cube for the Black Dagger Brotherhood on my shelves. Um, but I really need to finish this novella already. The next three books I'm gonna talk about go together and it is books by Maggie Cole. So I have read Ruthless Stranger, which is the first book in the series. It's over there somewhere, but um, I have the rest of the books that she kindly sent to me on this shelf. I, it's currently the Mafia Romance Readathon right now. So I'm hoping to read this book. We'll see if I get to it. This is book two in her Mafia Wars series called Broken Fighter. And this is the third book in the series called Cruel Enforcer. Um, and by the way, both of these are signed by Maggie Cole. And I am very, very, very grateful and 
like thankful that she <laughs> sent these books to me. And then she also sent me her new release, which is Toxic. The first in her, I think it's the New York Mafia War series, if I'm not mistaken. Um, but this is a new book in a new series. Um, but I've been advised by some of my Mafia friends, Mafia reader friends, that I have to finish this series before reading this one. It'll like better the enjoyment, if that makes sense. So that's what I'm going to do. But I hope to read the rest of these books. These are on Kindle Unlimited, by the way. I think all of Maggie Cole's books are, if I'm not mistaken. Um, so yeah, these are on my TBR shelf. I hope to um, get to them soon. This is the Mafia Romance Readathon right now. So I should be reading them like right now. Next, I have Bride of the Sea by Emma Hamm. Emma Hamm is an amazing fantasy romance writer. Um, I loved her book, Heart of the Fae. It's one of my favorite fantasy romances. She has written a lot of other fantasy romances that are retellings. And so this is a Little Mermaid retelling. I actually got to about this point in the book like a, over a year ago. Um, I don't remember anything, but um, I put it down for whatever reason I can't remember, but I don't want to like forever DNF it. I think I just put it down for the moment. So I do want to finish this really badly because I do love Emma Ham's works. And hopefully once I finish this, I can read the rest of the books in this series because it's called like her Underworld series dealing with fae and fairies and retellings and fantasy stuff. <laughs> so I really enjoyed this series and I really want to continue with it. Next I have uh, Someone Exactly Like Me by Debbie Cromack. The author very kindly sent this to me. Um, she and I chat sometimes on Instagram. She's really nice. Yeah, she was very kind and sent this book to me. Um, it came signed. It says, Ava, always go after your dreams. Hugs, Debbie. Um, so I think that's really sweet of her, but this is a celebrity romance, I believe, which is sometimes a hit or miss for me when I love celebrity romances. I love them, but most of the time they're not really my cup of tea. So I really hope that this is one that I'm gonna love. Um, and I've kind of haven't read a celebrity romance in a little bit. So I'm hoping that this whets that appetite because <laughs> I'm wanting to read something like that, that I love, like I wanna like it. Um, so yeah, this is about Nico and Destiny. I believe Nico is um, like famous for being in a movie and then he falls in love with uh, Destiny. I think she's a writer. So um, I love writers and romance books. So I'm excited for this one. Then I have Love in the Library by Lauren Connolly. This was very kindly gifted to me by Tori over at Novel Life. So this one is about Hannah and Nathan and I believe they are enemies. Like it's an enemies to lovers romance. It's a little novella by the way. Um, it's an enemies to lovers romance and um, I think they have like competition and rivaling stuff going on in the university library. So that sounded really cute. And so thank you so much, Tori, for gifting this to me. I think she gifted it to me over Christmas time, which was so sweet of her. Um, but yeah, this is just feels like a quick read that I can fly through that I can hopefully add to my Goodreads goal and hopefully I love. Next, we're gonna be talking about a group of books. So Hello Lovely, I'm a rep for them. Um, you can check my rep code out down below. I believe it's Ava15 and you can get a 15% off discount on their website. Um, but they sent me the Jock Rowe series by Sarah Nye. I've already read book one, but I wanted to keep the series kind of like together. The ones that I have not read are Jock Rule, Jock Road, and this little novella called Switch Bitter. I really enjoyed this book, which is Jock Rowe. Also, these covers are freaking adorable. I love them. Um, so whenever I'm in the mood, I'm going to binge the rest of this series. I don't know when I can read this little novella, um, but I have the first three, which is amazing. But these books are just so cute. They're sports romances and college. I loved book one, so hopefully I love the rest of the series as well. Next is a romance staple. We have Ugly Love by Colleen Hoover. I've read so many Colleen Hoover's books. And no, I have not read this one yet because I think I am scared too. The audiobook for this book has come in through my holes of the library for the past like five months. <laughs> and I just keep clicking like, like uh, the wait list button, like, like send it to the next person. Keep me on the wait list. Like I'm just not in the mood for this book for some reason, or it's just intimidating me. I don't know. My dog is crying. Hello. Would you like to be in my lap? Come here, come here, come here. Now this one wants to say hello. Say hello to the public Katniss. Say, say hello to the public, Katniss. Okay, we all done. Okay, this little one wanted to be in my lap. You can't even see him. <laughs> he likes to sit in my lap. 
Say hello, Ali. Here. Hello, Ali. <laughs> okay. Anyway, um, you can sit down now. Sit down. Thank you. <laughs> um, this book. I know nothing about it. All I know is that it has wrecked people and I'm kind of scared. So we're going to leave it at that. And I'm not going to read a summary because I want to go into her book blind. Next, I have The Summer I Found You by Jolene Perry. I got this a while ago. I think like a year ago, I went on this journey on thrift books and just buying a bunch of books in general that had disability or chronic illness representation in it that I've never heard about before. And so I don't know if this is YA or adult romance, I'm not sure. Um, but our heroine in here has diabetes, which I've never read about that representation before in a book from the heroine's perspective. I think I've read a Chloe Lee's book where the hero has diabetes. But yeah, this sounded good to me and I hope that the chronic illness representation is done well. Next, I have Love on the Beach by Jennifer Probst. Probst? I'm so sorry, I don't know how to say that name. Um, but Valentine PR actually sent this book to me. They've sent me a few of these books back here, um, which is so incredibly kind of them. Um, but I don't know much about this book. I think the cover is what makes me want to read it really badly. Oh my goodness, the heroine has my name. It's spelled a Y though, instead of a IE. That's so funny. I'll read the summary for this one because I want to read it. Okay, it says, Avery Sunshine might not have a soulmate of her own, but she still believes in happily ever after for her clients. Making Dreams Come True is her business at Sunshine Bridal, which she runs with her two sisters. When her best friend announces her engagement, Avery is thrilled to take charge of the giddy bride-to-be's big day. Less thrilling, her best friend's arrogant and demanding brother, who just so happens to be the man of honor. That already sounds so cute. Okay, wait. Carter Ross's first instinct, call 911. He promised to take care of his impulsive little sister and he honors that vow, even if that means taking over her wedding, where he is sure Avery will fail. At best, Avery is unpredictable. At worst, she's everything like the spitfire of a college girl he remembers. The main event could run wild, with Avery and Carter wrestling for control, tempers heat up. So does the spark of attraction they're fighting with every kiss. As the wedding draws near, it's time to reconcile with a rocky past and make a decision that could change everyone's lives. Because what they're rebelling against looks a lot like love. That sounds so cute and this looks like a very beachy read and we're coming up on summertime. So this just went even higher my TBR <laughs> after reading that summary. Next is The Last Letter by Rebecca Yaros. This was very kindly gifted to me um, by Shelby from Shelby Taggart Reads. I love her so much. I love Shelby. This was gifted to me many years ago, but I am too scared to read it because all I know is that it is about our heroine and a hero who is in the military and I'm scared that one of them's gonna die. <laughs> like, I don't know if that happens. Don't count me on that. But like you see dog tags just sitting here and like, that scares me. <laughs> and I've heard that this book is just really emotional, but worth the read. So I'm excited to read it. I just, I need to be in the right mindset to pick this up. Next, I have Queen of Swords by Katie Robert. This is actually the uh, first book in her only like sci-fi related series, which I didn't even know she had a sci-fi related series, but that's like some of her first books she's ever published. Actually, this book I don't think is in print anymore. I found it at a local used bookstore um, and I snagged it up immediately when I saw Katie Robert's name on the cover. Um, but yeah, this one, is about Ophelia. Ooh, and she's supposed to marry the prince of Hansarda, but then she ends up falling in love with his brother named Boone. Yeah, it's a sci-fi romance, so I'm really excited for this. I know that there's like a prequel book to this, so I'm gonna have to read that first, and I don't know where to find it because it's out of print too. Like you can't buy it anywhere. Like I feel like some of these authors <laughs> are like us booktubers where Sometimes like your first videos or maybe your first books are a little cringy to you. So you private your videos or you stop making your books. Like that's what I assume, I don't know. Um, but like you wanna, if you're, from personal experience, like those first couple of videos that I made on booktube, cringy. Don't even want to look at them at all. And so I assume that's what authors do sometimes with their first books because like I can't find some of her first written books same thing with uh, Grace Draven and a bunch of other people that I've looked into their backlist stuff because my favorite authors, I wanna read all of their backlist, you know? And so I'm a nerd like that and I go research all of the books that my favorite authors have ever written. <laughs> so um, I'm excited for this. 
and I need to uh, find that novella so I can finally read this one. Next is another book that Valentine PR sent me, which is Running Wild by K.A. Tucker. This is her next book in like the same series as The Simple Wild, but it's centered around a different couple. Now I haven't read this book yet because I have not read the last uh, little novella about Kala and Jonah from book one. Like they have another book because I've read the second book. I don't think I've read, I think it's like book 2.5, which the audiobook I believe is on Audible Plus. So I need to listen to that soon. But anyway, that's why I haven't picked this one up yet, but this is centered around, I think like Kala's friend or something like that. Um, So I am excited for it. I just need to pick up that other book before this one. Another Valentine PR book is Lessons in Sin by Pam Godwin. And Valentine PR is literally hooking me up all the time. I love them. Um, so this is a book that my dear friend Jen from the Book Refuge loves. And all I know is that it is a student teacher or headmaster uh, student relationship age gap romance that I'm looking forward to. I've never read a Pam Godwin. So this might be a great book to pick up first. I do want to read See It Ruined by her too. So next I have Dirty Talk by Lauren Landish. The author very kindly sent me a signed copy of this book um, and I have not picked it up yet, but I, I love this cover. I think it's really pretty. The moment I heard his velvety voice growl that I'm his kitty cat, I knew I was in trouble. <laughs> Derek, the love whisperer king gives out relationship advice on the radio to everyone, but he's given me something a bit more personal. Nobody's ever talked to me the way he does. Daring, demanding, sexy, and oh so dirty. Maybe we started this whole thing a little backwards, hooking up first and getting to know each other after, but I'm starting to let my guard down. My untrusting heart is beginning to think that maybe fairy tales do come true, even for me. I feel beautiful and hopeful when he worships my body. I feel dirty and naughty when he whispers filthy things in my ear. But is this real? Can something so naughty really be so good for me? I've never read a romance dealing with like radio stuff before. I know there was that one book, The X Talk, but I never read it. But that sounds pretty good to me. And I'm very grateful that this author sent this book my way. Valentine PR also sent me Escape With Me by Kristen Proby. I think this is a romance dealing with like a bar owner or something like that. I want to go into this one blind, but yeah, it has something to do with a bar owner, I want to say. Um, and I want to make sure and look into this series because I don't know if this is the first in the series. I got to check that out. Um, but I'm excited for this one too. I have Let Us Dream by Alyssa Cole. Um, I love Alyssa Cole. And so this one, I believe is her like kind of like historical fiction, a little bit romance or historical romance kind of. Um, this is set in 1917. Ooh, it has something to do with a chef who goes to America to, to New York to live the American dream. And he falls in love with his boss, Bertha. That sounds cute. <laughs> I love foodie chef romances. Like they make me so hungry and I love them a lot. <laughs> Next is another book that I ended up like DNFing, but not for forever. Like I put it down for some reason. Um, sometimes like a new release comes out and, or I don't feel well and I put a book down. So next is Gardening Temptation by Talia Hibbert. I love Talia Hibbert. Y'all know I love Talia Hibbert. This book was kindly gifted to me by Zay over at Witty Reads on Instagram. I love her so much. She's a near and dear friend of mine. Um, but yeah, I put this down for whatever reason and I don't remember why, um, but I love Talia Hibbert and I never want to DNF one of her books. So um, I plan to pick this one up very soon. Um, it's a little itty bitty novella. So um, this one has to do with like a bodyguard and an enemies to lovers romance too. So next is A Wilderness Within by Emma Castle. This was very kindly gifted to me for Christmas by Emma over at Dearest Emma. I'll link all these people I'm talking about down below, by the way, so you can check them all out. This is a pandemic romance before, and this was written before the pandemic happened. So yeah, I heard great things about this book, especially from Jen over at the Book Refuge. So I'm hoping I love this. I loved Love in the Wild by Emma Castle. So I'm hoping I love this one as well. Um, that one was a Tarzan retelling. So um, I am really excited because I also love Emma Castle's writing. Then I have Taken by E.C. Roderick. This was very kindly sent to me by the author, which I am very, very grateful for. They also signed it too, which is very sweet. But I thought I'd read the back for you because I don't know a ton about this, but I do remember when she sent this to me and I read the summary, I was very intrigued. So it's been a while since I read the back though. So Matt was my husband. I was supposed to be with him for the rest of my life when the accident happened and took him away from me. I wouldn't love anyone else, I believed until I met Leaf. He tells me to trust him and to take my chance with him. 
except I'm his hostage. Not only am I his hostage, but time is holding me captive too. I'm suddenly trapped in a world that is not mine. The year is 1756 and I'm strangely in Massachusetts, in Massachusetts, I can't ever say Massachusetts correctly the first time, um, Massachusetts Bay Colony. War between Great Britain and France explodes across New England and terrorizes the territory. I don't know how I got here and all I want to do is find a way home. But the more time I'm stranded here, the more time I spend with Leaf and I am compelled toward him. Our lives are becoming inextricably, inextricably dang, I can't speak, um, <laughs> entwined and I'm afraid of losing everything I once knew and loved. I begin questioning where I truly belong as I think of the life I left behind. I wonder if I'm going to withstand this because all I know for certain is he is bound to my survival and to the truth of why I'm here. That sounds good. It gives me a lot of Outlander vibes, but set in America. So I'm excited. This is a chunky monkey of a book. So I have to be in the right mood to read a book this big. Next is Kiss My Cupcake by Helena Hunting. This was very kindly given to me for Christmas by Victoria over at Victoria Reads Romance. I'll link her down below as well. This, I know nothing about. I assume it's enemies to lovers based on the cover. She does not like him. Um, it has to do with cupcakes and baking and stuff. And I love Helena Hunting, so... I feel like this is gonna be a recipe for an amazing time. <laughs> Next is Leave Me Breathless by Jodi Ellen Malpass. I don't wanna read the summary for this one. I wanna go in blind to it, but I have read sub Jodi Ellen Malpass in the past, but that was a while ago and um, I'm hoping to love one of her other books. Next is one that I've been putting off for quite a long time. We have From Blood and Ash by Jennifer L. Armentrout. I've had this book for over a year, I wanna say. Um, this was very kindly gifted to me by Ashley. Um, I love her. She's my dear friend of mine. If you don't know what this book is, I would be surprised. This is about Poppy, I think. I don't, I have never read the summary for this book, um, but I've been told by multiple people that they want me to read it. <laughs> but this is like a fantasy romance that uh, has a lot of hype surrounding it. I'm excited to read it. I'm just intimidated. And I think one of the reasons why I haven't like picked it up yet is because the series isn't complete yet. And sometimes it's hard for me to pick up books um, that are in series that it's not complete yet because I'm a binger. I love binging crap. Next, I have Tutoring the Player by, oh, I'm covering up the author's name, um, Rebecca Jenshack. This was um, a part of Hello Lovely Box's um, Trope of the Month box. Um, and this one is a sports romance. And I think our hero is like a jock at college and he needs someone to tutor him. Enter the heroine. This book is so stinking beautiful though. Like, look how pretty this is. I'm obsessed. And then the last book, on this shelf is another Alyssa Cole book. We have Be Not Afraid. I picked this up because it's a very tea tiny novella and I love reading novellas like physically. I just feel so accomplished, you know, like I finished a physical book in such a short amount of time. Um, but yeah, this is one of her um, revolutionary uh, like romance, historical romances. Um, and so I'm excited to pick this one up. It's very short and I feel like I could fly through it. I think it's only like 70 pages. I've heard amazing things about her like more historical romances because I've only read um, her like modern day royalty ones. So I'm excited to pick this up. So there you have it. Those are all of the books on the top of my TBR, physically at least. <laughs> um, let me know down below if you've read any of these books or if you plan to or which books you think I should prioritize out of the bunch. I'd love to know. Um, and if you've made it this far into the video, you can leave me any sports related emoji because surprisingly there are a bunch of sports romances on the back of that shelf, which I did not plan to happen. <laughs> um, but yeah, thank y'all so, so much for watching. I will see y'all soon in my next one. Bye y'all.